Mum, you know school is so boring. I just don't want to go. I, I, I just want to be happy. Dean, if you want to be happy, you need money. And in order to get money, you need to go to school for a good house. Don't you want a good house, my dearie? A very fast car. Wouldn't you like to have a very fast car? Yeah. And holidays. Wouldn't you like to go to Disneyland? Of so, course. it's time for school. You mean to get all this stuff? I have to go to school? And then get a good job? Then I get good money? Then I can buy all these things? Okay? Dean! Hey! How you doing, man? Haven't seen you for a long time. Yeah, a long time. What's going on? I don't what, know. Why, why the long face? I don't know. I really don't. I'm not happy. I have everything, you know. A very good house. I go to Disneyland every year. I have a very fast car. I have everything. But I feel frustrated. I'm not happy. I'm still not happy. Why is it? I ask everyone and they say to me, don't question it so much. Don't think too deeply. But I don't know. I'm so, I'm so frustrated. You mean after all this time, going to all that school and working for 10 years now? Yeah. 10 years. You got your money, you got your house, got everything. your kids, got your car, you got everything, and you're still dissatisfied? No, I'm not. You're not happy? No. All right. I got a story for you. What is it? Once upon a time, there was a circus, and this circus was coming to town. And of course, before the circus comes to town, they send somebody ahead of them to do the advertising, right? So the man, the advertising man, comes to the town and he says, Dear town, the best circus in the world is coming here next week. And guess what? The price is just one dollar. One dollar for one ticket. So everybody, wow, circus for just one dollar is great. And he said, but that's not all. And the best thing about this circus is you're going to have the whole circus just to yourself. One person, one ticket. One dollar is going to sit in the circus and be fully entertained just himself. Just like a king. The whole circus just for you. So of course everybody queued up and was buying tickets, buying, buying tickets. And next week the circus came to town. Of course again, big line. And the first man with his ticket was ready, excited. Yeah, yeah, I'm first, I'm number one. So they took his ticket, allowed him into the circus and then he went in huge circus ring right inside and just one sofa just for him and he was sitting there oh all this entertainment just for me wow i'm a king and then the lights came on spotlights and there were two big boxes you know big guys boxes one boxer was called daytime and one boxer was called nighttime they stood up and Dean is looking forward to the show, they're going to box each other, he's going to have some entertainment and then they walk to him and they pick up Dean and they just throw him on the floor and then daytime hits him, punch him, kick him and then nighttime punch him, kick him and then daytime kicks him and then nighttime kicks him and punch him and he was bloody and he was torn and then they grab him and they threw him out the back of the circus. So he, Dean gets up from the back of the circus and of course he's embarrassed, right? So he just walks out the back, not wanting to be seen by anybody. But they see him, some of his friends see him and they say, Hey, hey, Dean, come. No, it's not Dean, right? Anyway, some <laughs> Okay. Come, how was the show? How was it? And he says, Oh, the show was fantastic. Perfect. It was great. The best I ever had, man. It was just fantastic. You won't believe it. And then they say, but what's with the blood? Why blood and why are your torn clothes and all that? Say, yeah, 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 that, that, that's just part of the show. It's good, no problem. See you later, bye. And he goes off. So then the second person comes in, 
and goes into the circus, and of course, same thing happens. He sits down, waiting, feeling like a king, waiting for the show, boxer, night, day, night, night time, night, day, night time and daytime come, and they pick him up again, beat him up, daytime beats him up, and then nighttime beats him up, and they throw him out the back, and he goes out the back, all embarrassed, and the same thing. His friends ask him, hey, how was it? Did you also enjoy it? Was it good? You know, and they say, yeah, 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 of course, man, of course. It was perfect, wonderful. I said, but you also have blood and torn shirt. They did the same show on you. Yeah, 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 it's just part of the show. No problem. Enjoy the show. See you later. Did you get it? I don't get it. Why didn't the others tell their friends that they shouldn't get in? I really can't understand that. It's insane, you know? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You see, actually, most people don't get that, that story. But the, the point, actually, the point of that story is that people are just so full of ego. And being full of ego, you never want to admit that you're wrong. You never want to admit that you made a mistake or whatever. So instead of actually admitting and saying to your friends, no, 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 I made a mistake, don't go. It was terrible, they cheated me, they robbed me, they, you know, I suffered, blah, blah, blah. They just say, yeah, 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 it's all good, have a good time, see it, because then they're not embarrassed, right? So instead of actually standing for the truth and stating the truth, they actually hide the truth and say, yeah, it's all good. And that's the problem. Yeah, I see now. It's just like the donkey story, you know that? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the pictures, no. <laughs> back, 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 back. It must be about pictures six or four. Back, 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 back. <laughs> now it's the donkey. Okay, okay, next one. <clears throat> okay. So it's just like the donkey story, right? <laughs> Carrying all the heavy thing and trying to find the Yeah, yeah that food. carrot. Trying yeah, to get that carrot. carrot. Right? You never catch it, right? Just, oh. <laughs> promise, promise. Um, and the hamster also. But well, that right? one running around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running, in the running, running, wheel running. And not going in the anywhere. Same place. Yeah, yeah. Same so place. now I got the point. Okay. Gonna do something about it? No. You're not can't. gonna do anything? Of course I will. Yeah. I will change my everything. My life will completely change from Good now luck. on. So when I see you next time, I wanna see a different dean. Okay, then I should go now. Okay, so you heard a little bit of the introduction uh, about me, and it's a real story. Really, I, I, at the age of 25, 25, I had everything. I had house, car, girlfriend, money. I was the center of my friends. I'm a positive, happy guy. So I had everything, but really, I didn't feel satisfied. Something was missing, something. I didn't know what, so I just thought, okay, it's not around me. I can't see it. I can't learn it around me. So let me just get a caravan and travel around the world and try to learn from different cultures, different countries. So in 1994, I started from London and for two years, I traveled from London to India, roughly about three months in each country. And in every country, I learned something, yeah? So in, in Turkey, let's hold it there. In, in Turkey, it was my first experience actually of a sort of different culture, you know, when I'm going from London through all Europe, it was pretty much the same. But in Turkey, it was my first sort of, I don't know what to say, like Middle East experience, Far East experience. And I really, really liked it. I love Turkish people, that's why I live here. And their culture, their hospitality and everything. And one thing really stuck to my mind when I was in Turkey, and we'll show it in the next picture. This quote, this quote from Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Peace at home, peace in the world. And when I first heard that, I thought, wow. Peace at home, peace in the world. And you know how we all want peace, right? Everybody wants peace, brotherhood. And I, I really took that in. I thought, okay, that's a really nice quote. And I tried to sort of meditate on, on that quote. And it affected me here in Turkey. It affected my journey. And it actually went much deeper when I got to India. 
Same idea, but much deeper, and I'll show you how it went. Hello, dear soul. Hello. You look lost. Yes, I am. Are you looking for something? Yes, I am. I'm looking for happiness. And I want to be happy. I come from far away. Where is happiness? What, what's your name? Dean. Ah, oh, Dean. Yeah. I think you're English, right? Yeah, I'm coming from English, okay. England. Okay. From my caravan. Welcome to India. Okay. Yeah. I like this person. Nice questions. Come all the way from England. Got some desire to find the truth, I think, right? Okay, I got a nice story for you. What is it? One day there was a fish. And this fish was living on land. And it had been living on land for so long, it actually forgot it was a fish. Amnesia, suffered from amnesia, you know, forgetfulness. So it was living on land, of course, and making all, trying to make all adjustments to life, you know, nice chair, nice house, nice car, like you, you know, in your life, I'm sure yeah. you tried to be happy, Just right, made adjustments, but it was never happy, it was never satisfied, and it couldn't understand why, what was missing, you know, it had everything, car, house, nice wife, nice children, right, holidays, going out to the cinema, going out with friends, but <sighs> something not fully satisfied you, right? So it wasn't until this fish became so brave, actually like you, you're brave, come all the way to India, from England, somebody could easily rob you and steal you, but you came, well done, right? The fish was brave enough to jump into this ocean, this unknown area, and once it jumped into the ocean, it just, <sighs> oh wow! Yeah, okay, now I'm happy, right? Now I'm satisfied, and now I'm comfortable. Everything's just perfect here. Why? It realized, the fish realized, this is my nature. I'm a fish, and I'm in fish's nature, so it just felt comfortable and satisfied, fully satisfied, right? So a little bit like you. So you've been struggling all your life, trying to make adjustments in your life, but You've been living on land, like the fish living on land, but you've been living in body consciousness. You know, I am this body, I'm English, I'm an English teacher, uh, even I'm a man, and all this stuff, and this is the source of your problems, actually. If you look, you've tried to make all adjustments, but you still have all these problems, right? You're still sectarian, you're racist, you're sexist, right? You hate, you envy, you're jealous, you have all these problems, right? So just, you just need to adjust, like the fish adjusted its environment. If you adjust your environment in your mind, to not body conscious, but soul conscious, because everybody's soul, then you've got the solutions. Oh my God, you gave me the reasons and the solutions. So, if I change my mind conscious, body consciousness to mind consciousness, then everything will be over. So, everyone is a soul and souls doesn't belong to any country, right? No. Soul doesn't belong to any country, right? I'm so, sure you're familiar with Mevlana and his teachings. A soul is soul. So, I'm not a nationalist. No. Bye bye. Okay, so the soul is not a male or a female, right? No. Nope. On the spiritual level, on the soul level, there's no sex. There's no physical sex. I mean, male or female. Soul is soul. So, I'm not a sexist then? No, of course not. So, does the soul belong to any race? Race? No, of course not. Soul is spiritual by nature. No race. Okay then, I'm not a racist anymore. <laughs> Great, right? How do you feel? No more racism, wonderful. <laughs> you feel, feel lighter? I feel very light now. Yeah. Okay then, and the soul doesn't belong to any sect, right? 
sect? No, of course not. Soul doesn't belong to this group, Muslim group, Fenalbachi group, or Galatasaray group, or male group. No group. The soul doesn't have any group. So, this is unnecessary. I'm not a sectarianist. Absolutely anymore. not. Okay, wonderful. So, eternal, full of knowledge and full of law. Wonderful. So, yeah, that's, I don't feel... Actually, should. that's the nature of the soul. The yeah. soul, unlike the physical body. The soul is known as Sat Chit Ananda, which means actually eternal, full of knowledge and full of love. That's the nature of the soul, full of love. So, the soul doesn't hate or envy, right? It's not. Full of love. And this is so heavy, envy and hate in my soul that's bring me down. So yeah, big now weight. <laughs> I feel lighter. There is no hate, there is no envy. Oh my God. Well done. That's Super. everything. <laughs> I feel so light now, so I can go free. <laughs> I, I hope you get the story there. Ba basically, it was like, through my life, and this happened for real for me. I, I just moved through learning, through life, traveling, learning from people, learning from philosophy, that shifting from body consciousness to soul consciousness, then Ataturk said, peace, in the, peace at home, peace, no, peace in the country. And peace in the country, peace in the world, right? But take that deeper. We say peace at home, right? Ataturk started with peace at home, but peace at home starts with peace in you. So if you have peace in you, then we can have peace in the home, peace in the village, peace in the country, peace in the world. Real peace, based on real soul, not uh, on bodily identification. I'm peace with him because he's my countryman, he's my, what do I say, Hemshiri? Hemshiri? Yes. My Hemshiri. <laughs> or my religion, or my group. No. This transcends, this soul nature, soul consciousness, transcends all these limits. And as soon as you become slowly soul conscious, everybody's your best friend. You don't, you don't hate anybody, you're not against anybody, and it's really, really nice. That's what happened to me. I'm very happy, <laughs> I'm very satisfied. I'm happy to meet you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs>